Uh, for example, leader-based systems. Uh, Paxos and Raft and PBFT and some of these leader-based systems. Even some of the like, distributed proof-of-stake systems where um, we take turns being leaders. The problem is, even if you're taking turns being leader for two seconds, if the attacker can shut down one computer at a time, then they can shut down your entire network because they'll just shut down your leader. And when we move to a new computer being the leader, they'll move to attacking the new leader. And they'll just keep following the leader and shut us down as long as they want by just shutting down one computer at a time. The gossip algorithm is you give your transactions to random people who give them to random people who give them to random people and it spreads exponentially fast like wildfire and pretty soon everybody knows the transactions. Everybody gets every transaction fast. But there's no consensus on order, so we haven't solved the problem. But it's fast. Gossip is going to be fast. But then we add something else. We add a tiny bit of information to each transaction or each group of transactions. Very little extra. Just a few more bytes. Um, so maybe 1% more bytes going over the internet. No bandwidth cost, really. And what we get is not only does everybody know the transactions, they know the complete history of everyone who talked to everyone. You will know exactly who Alice has talked to and in what order she talked to them. And when she talked to Bob, you'll know who talked to Bob right before that conversation. And then who talked to him before that. And you'll know every time somebody gossiped, who they gossiped with. But when you gossip, you tell them all the transactions you know, and you tell them about the graph itself, about this history itself. In other words, we're not just gossiping about transactions. We are gossiping about gossip. By doing gossip about gossip, we get this beautiful view of what everybody knows. And because I know exactly what Alice knows and when she knew it, I can run the voting algorithm incorporating votes from Alice without Alice ever sending those votes. I can just predict how she ought to have voted and vote for her in my head. And I can figure out how, I should, how Bob would have voted if he had voted. So there's no need for him to send me votes. I can run the entire voting algorithm in my head without anybody ever sending me a vote, without anybody ever sending a receipt. So you could run one of these voting algorithms that has the beautiful math proofs and strong, strong security without any voting there actually happening. In fact, we can go even further and we can get math proofs that will have fairness in our results. So what kind of speed do we get? Gossip about gossip with virtual voting lets you run right at the limit of the speed of the internet. Whatever your bandwidth limits are, that's about how fast your transactions per second can be. You're never going to get faster than that. And how secure is it? Byzantine fault tolerant with asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant. The strongest kind of security possible and the strongest fairness. We have mathematical proofs of fairness. No leader, no taking turns, nobody is different from anyone else, everyone is equal, there's no DDoS attacks, um, there's no way that a malicious node can do anything bad, we've digitally signed our transactions so you can't forge them, everything is beautiful.